We were, you know, a few seconds away and one missed shot away from it being the perfect season. You know, and just be with him every day, battle with him in practice every day, uh, seeing it all translate on the court for him. I, I had watched your league, I would followed your league in college a little bit just because, you know, I wanted to play professional basketball during summer league. And he's like, hey, look, like, you know, this is what it is over here. Right now, you know, you're in the situation you're in. I have a better situation for you. What a season and what a year it's been for my next guest here on the crossover with Delroy Lucas. Not only has the numbers on the court skyrocketed, but the man just signed a new contract to stay in, Olymp and in an Olympiacos jersey for two more seasons where he'll be raising a new daughter born just before Christmas and will be turning 29 in just a few days. Right about the problem about the time this episode comes out, my man, Alec Peters, welcome to the crossover. Dude, it's been like, what a crazy season, right? Am I right or wrong? Yeah, th thank you for having me, uh, first off. Um, thank yeah, you what for a being year. here. What, what, what a year. It's, uh, <laughs> it, it is, it's kind of like, it's when it rains, it pours, but in a good way. You know what I mean? Like, it, you know, coming into the season, um, obviously, new team, a little bit of, of a different dynamic with our team. Uh, me being able to step into a role that um, offered me some more opportunity and hopefully been taking advantage of it and then throw a throw a new baby into the mix mid-year and... <laughs> You know, a few wins later, our, our team has is, is got some momentum. And, uh, you know, I was telling you before, like, this is the best time of the year. And we've all gotten to this point. And, yeah, it's been been quite the year. All good things, too. Man, I'm doing I'm doing all this research, you know, the day before last night, once we confirmed your your, your time to do this. And, and I'm like, all right, what do I congratulate it on first? You know, I, you got – obviously, it's got to be the little baby girl, right? She was born December 15th, little Christmas gift. December 15th, the greatest day on earth, man. Uh, it's, it is. And, and, you know, leading up to it, it was like, you know, how are you going to deal with it midseason? And other players have obviously done it before. So it wasn't like something totally new for everybody. But for, for me and my wife, you know, was being our first kid, uh, being away from home and having the baby here in, in Athens, like there was just, there was a little bit, you know, half panic, half like, right. you know, anxious, anxiety about the whole thing. And, um, everything, everything turned out great. Um, m most of like for me leading up to it was like, you know, how is this going to interrupt my, my daily routine? Cause I'm a big routine guy, <laughs> like, you know, from, from the time I wake up to, you know, when I go to practice at practice, after practice, like you right. know, routine, routine is sacred to me, you know, before games, we all have it. Right. And I was yeah, just, is, really, is it, I was really is worried. Is it a superstitious routine or is it just like, I don't think it's superstitious because if it, if it gets thrown off, I don't, you know, I don't right. check out or I don't like mentally go into like a hole somewhere. So <laughs> if it gets thrown off, it is. But I've, I've definitely had to adjust since having our our daughter um, adjusted a little bit. Um, you know, some some areas I don't compromise, but some areas for sure I've had to had to adjust. So I, I, I like the way you use the word adjust. That sounds like yeah. something that came right from your wife's mouth, not from yours, actually. <laughs> <laughs> It's just everybody tells you you're gonna you're gonna have to adjust. You're gonna have to adjust. Yeah. It's not gonna be the same thing you always used to do. And I, you know, for a while I keep telling them like, no, like, you know, I'm gonna still be the same me. I'm still gonna do the same things I want to do and, and make sure I still stay with my routine. But the adjustments have been made, so but it's all good. It's been almost four months, and you got a baby girl, right? Yep, baby girl. Yeah, so, so I mean, that's like double adjustment when it when when, when I mean I don't want to say when it's a female, when it's a young girl. It's a double adjustment. They're so easy though when they're young. So enjoy this moment until they're about thirteen. I I just yeah every now and then I get a glimpse of the future because I have two younger sisters and you know my, ah, my wife's okay. got a younger sister so I get I get a little glimpse into the future and I'm just like all right the, the time I see why everybody says right now is the best time because exactly. she's, she's just so little and yeah she's just there and she loves everything so it, it, today right now I'm just gonna enjoy it. I got I got two boys and a girl, and the boys the boys are difficult to live, they're about fourteen. You know they end up like you know getting in trouble, the testosterone, breaking breaking wrists, breaking legs, and the girl's <laughs> fine until they're like fourteen, and their and their girlfriend doesn't invite them over for a sleepover one night, and it's like the world ends, you know. <laughs> so that, that's what you got to look forward yeah. to. Yeah, just get, I'm gonna uh, yeah I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna pass on all that. Hopefully, I can punt a lot of that to my wife in the future. So. <laughs> So you see what happens when, man, you start putting up numbers and, and not only obviously you sign a new contract, hopefully those numbers are, hopefully those numbers have increased just as much as your numbers on the court have, 
but you also get to be a guest on my show, the crossover. How's that? I, I don't know. I don't know what's better, right? Like I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> I'm sitting think, here right now trying to trying to weigh what's better. I mean, this yeah, is, this is con- an honor. This is I, this is an honor, right? I think the contract might be a little bit better, man. To be honest with you, you know, my, my son and I, you know, Dane, my son is on, mm-hmm. on the sideline yeah. with me. We always he always goes off on me, man, telling me that I said something to you the day the day of the game about you taking over Zankoff or, or something like that. I was like, no, dude, that was you. I said that was him, not me. He's like, no, yeah. dad, you opened up your mouth. Can't can't tell a hundred people have you know you guys aren't the only ones. It, it, was, it wasn't you, it was somebody else. It's uh it's been a very popular uh, I guess comment towards me this whole year. So you yeah, know, I, haven't I, been as much lately, but at the beginning of the year for sure it was. Hey man, I look at it this way: they they cannot be saying that, which which is the totally opposite, you know. Right, right, and you know I'm you know super blessed to be able to be in this situation to begin with. You know, even even last year having to play with a guy like Sasha, um, you know, and just be with him every day, battle with him in practice every day, uh, seeing it all translate on the court for him, you know, right. maybe not so much for me, but for him, it was, it was great. I mean, the season he had last year was unbelievable and we were, you know, a few seconds away and one missed shot away from it being the perfect season. And yeah. The, yeah. the opportunity he has now is totally earned. We're, go- we're going to get into the journey here in a minute, but it, like I, I look at all the stuff that I've been researching, and I, and I followed you since since Cheska because I just really loved your game. I thought that you were this complete player that wasn't actually being used enough to 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 do all the things that you could possibly do. Like I think we're seeing this year, but you you know you went to Moscow, Istanbul was you know I don't know what happened there, but I know there was a COVID season, so it was a, I'm sure it was a difficult time. Then the Baskonia for a couple of years, and now you're you know Olympiakos, and it seems like with the two year contract you found a home. What took so long? That's that's because I want to get into your personal journey, yeah. but I also want to know why it took so long, man. You're one of those guys I I I look at as being like almost the perfect complement to anybody on the team. You know, I mean, you do just about everything. You got the height, you got the rebounding, you know how to pass the ball, you play defense, you're physical. What took so long to, to get to this, this yeah. now this new comfort zone? Yeah, and, you know, for, for a while, maybe I was asking the same question because yeah. that that first year, I mean, first of all, how lucky was I to be able to walk into EuroLeague and, and <laughs> have a job at Cheska? And that, that, que- the, that, question, the- that question's coming up in a little yeah. bit. <laughs> so, you know, and that, that just being my first introduction to it all, like winning it that year, playing with the, the teammates that I had, um, you know, and then realizing quickly after that, like, okay, you got to, you got to go somewhere else. So go to Ephesus, same kind of story, another great team. You know, you're kind of, I always just kind of felt like I was the guy who was, who everybody loved. Like, you know, we like him as a player. He does all the right things, but just don't love him enough to where he's a, a, a future, you know, he's a cornerstone of the future. He's a, he's a guy that we need to have in the future. Right. He was always just like a, Hey, you're really good for us this year. And well, you're, you're, really, you're, you can you're plug. expendable. Yeah, but you know, you you can be we can we can have somebody else do that and right. do the same thing. And and for a while, that's kind of how it felt until, um, you know, I got to Vitoria and played for for Dusko Ivanovic that first year. He kind of gave me a great opportunity to just let just be a little free that first year. And, and he ran a lot of action for me. Um, he gave me some freedom to to not only just be a shooter, but um, to, you know, post up, to use screens, um, you know, handle the ball a little bit. It just, um, that year really formed, you know, what I think my future looked like as a player. And I think it, it was a, a year that kind of proved to the league itself that like, hey, he's more than just what he did the first two years with uh, Cheska and Ephes. You know, he's not just a, a small piece on a great team. You know, he can be, um, you know, more, uh, more of a, uh, I don't know, go-to guy or more right. a bigger role type of player on on a, on a big team, and I think those years in Vitoria were that was the time that I was able to kind of take a step back and and really have that focus and and lock in on that part of my career, and then it's brought me to it's brought me to here, and you know, staring at another great season or you know probably personally my best season I've had over here, and you know, a contract extension, and yeah. That's awesome, man. Hey, let, 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 let's figure out how you got there, man. You, I love the fact that, because you know this is kind of all about your life. I love the fact that I finally found, not finally, there's a bunch of you guys out there, but I finally found someone that was more like me when I was a kid that's like, 
man, I just played everything. I mean, just give me a ball and I played it. It didn't matter what it was, except for soccer. I wasn't much of a soccer fan, but mm. tennis, volleyball, baseball, basketball, football, it didn't matter. I played everything. And I felt like that's what made me a better player on the basketball court. I found, you know, I wanted to play baseball professionally, but between, you know, I was drafted to play out of, out of high school, but then, you know, I was, I, I didn't have any scholarship offers. My dad made me go play, play basketball so I could study, which mm -hmm. is probably the best move that I've ever made. Um, but it's like, it's like you just kind of found your way through other sports. And I got a feeling that uh, like a lot of the, what you, what you represent on the court has so many other sports involved in it, like football, like soccer, like everything. Because you just have a different sense of the game, I think. That's how I, that's how I look at it anyway. That's how it felt for me. Yeah. I feel like a lot of the intangible qualities about myself came from doing other things. And right. I think, and I tell people this all the time, like, you know, in high school, I was 6'3", you know, not, not really big and strong, not, not really athletic. I was just a guy who, who loved to, loved to play sports in, in American football. Football was my, that was my go-to <laughs> sport at the time. Like I, I was the court, I was quarterback of the team. You know, I was, you know, I had a real future in that. And, right. um, you know, coaches telling me like, Hey, this is your future. This is your future. And, you know, college is telling me, Hey, this, cause this is your future. And I just, I did not like playing football as much as I love playing basketball. And, you know, it, for, for playing quarterback in football, it was play a series, you'd score, and then you'd go sit for 20, 25 minutes right. until you got the right. ball back. And they're like, basketball just had like that continuity and that, you know, oh, like constant action. And I loved it. And I just, you know, I didn't see myself not playing basketball. And thankfully that summer between, you know, when I was 15, 16 years old, I, I grew three inches, got to about six foot six, got a little bit faster, got a little bit stronger. Basketball started becoming easier for me. And, you know, I got good enough to earn a scholarship to play basketball, um, you know, at Valparaiso. And if had, if that had not happened, had I not grown or had I not formed into, you know, a little bit more of a, of a, of an athlete with the, with basketball, I would have, you know, stuck with American football and maybe, maybe learned to like it and my path would totally be different, but and, yeah, and here you, we are. I wouldn't be doing this interview. You'd be like Patrick Mahomes right now. <laughs> Like the thing, guys. Sometimes I'll sit around. We'll watch football on Sundays, like me and Thomas walk up, um, you know, and George Pappas, and and we'll <laughs> sit around and watch football on Sundays, and they'll they'll look at me. Could have been you. Could have been you. <laughs> and we make we make that joke all the time. But uh, who knows? Who knows? We. I know you, you you spoke often about your parents being a big part of everything, but with your whole family, you'll take. Obviously, it's the same thing with me. They take you to the games. They take you to here. They take you there. It's you know, I coach kids now, and sometimes it's it's so crazy to see. Because we didn't have all that access to, to Uber and the taxis, you know, by phone and whatever. And I see kids being picked up all the time by, you know, Ubers and stuff like that when I get them out of practice. Having your parents there, did they, number one, obviously, I, I know they helped you, you know, guide you through your career and help you, you know, not so only make that decision, but bring you to where you are today. But also the support that they gave you when you chose basketball over football. What would... What was that feeling to have that support as, as you know, I'm sure you have the rest with the rest of your family yeah. also. Yeah, they, I mean, man, listen, I'm, I'm incredibly fortunate and blessed to have two parents that like they, from day one, were all about what are you interested? In? You know, how can we help you? My dad wasn't a basketball guy, right. but when he found out that basketball was what I wanted to do, it was my path. He studied, watched every tape, read every book. <laughs> he became he became and became my coach and coached really? me until I was eight and coached me until I was eighteen years old and left for college. And you know he just he was all about his kids all the time. And I was you know incredibly lucky to have them. And you know going back to when I had to kind of make that decision and when I you know they immediately pushed back on it because they were they were all about like hey finish what you started you know I started playing football like finish right. it out like see it through like don't just don't just give up on it you know so easily. So they made me you know, do a few more things, even after I'd already kind of made up in my mind, I didn't want to play football anymore. And they could just see, you know, as they came and they would watch, you know, watch me do some summer camps and a few things with football. They're like, yeah, you just don't, you're not there. You're mentally, you're, you're, you're messing up because you just don't love it anymore. Your joy's not there. And, and ultimately, um, you know, and I'm from a small town too. So you can imagine when, when one guy, you know, where football, basketball, it's king there. So like when one guy doesn't want to do something yeah. or leave you know it's because it's big news it's it's a big deal and so we had to deal with that a little bit of of disappointment not only from um you know people around but you know friends family but they were 
they, they just went full steam ahead. Um, you know, anything that we wanted to do as kids is, is you know, they, <laughs> they learned as much as they possibly could so that they could also be involved in it. And yeah, that's for all of us, you know, my older brother and two younger sisters. I think I think the smartest move they made was take you out of football if you weren't actually one hundred percent focused because that's not the sport you want to play if you're not. <laughs> no, no, <they're, laughs> not not at all. I mean, they they were seeing me drop back, throw passes in the dirt, just like they, they were. They weren't even. <laughs> they were like, okay, we get it now. We understand. Yeah, you don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> you, and, and you don't. You don't have to show us bit. anymore. <laughs> yeah, it was save your head a little bit from getting knocked around. You had an incredible college career, man, 2,348 points. I mean, all kinds of numbers at, at Velpo. Um, you got hurt in the last year. How bad did that? I mean, is, is that? Man, is that, that sucked. The, I mean, that, that's always the hardest time. It's probably the first time you've ever been injured also, right? I'm assuming. First time, and that was, like, heartbreaking, man. I, I was dealing with, like, and up to that point, like, if you had never dealt with injury really like that, you don't exactly. know what it is so like about January of my senior year I started like just having this discomfort in my foot and um when you're at a mid-major school sometimes you can get away with being the the bigger batter dude and this like powering through it and you know the competition isn't like high major college so you're not having to um, keep up with bigger athletic guys so I was just able to kind of power through for a month or so and then once right. we once it just kept getting worse and that treatment wasn't getting any better um it was like after my senior night uh, last home game at Valpo um, I went and got like you know the test done and the, the funny thing about it was the next day um, the trainer that we had at the time was so scared to tell me that you know I had a stress <laughs> fracture in my foot he like didn't he didn't say a word to me he took me to the doctor's office 20 minutes in the car did not say a word to me and I'm like you know the whole time like hey man like you know you telling me the doctor hasn't called you and told you what's what's up so we get to the doctor's office and obviously immediate immediate shutdown emotional just like wreck about not being able to play um and help our team make a tournament run which we were very capable of doing my senior year and right having to shut it down because you know for the future if i didn't if i would have kept going um it would have probably led into my first year as a pro yeah well sometimes you got to listen to the doctors man even though it's difficult yeah. <laughs> they don't I know know. That, that sucked man that that's that sucked especially when you spend invest that much in a, in a place for four years and right you have all these dreams and aspirations and the guys you were doing it with and um to just leave it just a little bit short was yeah that, it's got I, you know. I always talk about how hard the last game is as a player you know that that, that last mm -hmm. whether you win or lose it doesn't matter it's your last go around in your four years of college you can never go back again it's finality no. is what it is and, no. and to have it to have it cut short because of injury i mean it's not not the best scenario either but you know it, that, that's what this game is all about though no and, and you know fortunately i was still able to get get picked in the draft and go to a place that they helped handle my rehab phoenix you know the trainers and doctors right. there helped handle my rehab from the foot surgery and got me ready to go for the beginning of the next season you spent most of your time at Phoenix in the G League after the draft. What what was your experience like there? I mean, what's the positive you take off? What's the negative? What were your overall feelings about that experience? I'm sure there's all kinds of emotions. Uh, not a lot of positive, to be <laughs> honest, man. Uh, I, I had the, to, you know I had to ask yeah, anyways. Yeah, not a lot. Of, we were the worst team in the league. We didn't win a game in January that year. Um, every time I did get a chance to play, it was, you know, Either you're you're up thirty, you're down thirty, or thirty seconds right. left in the in the game, and um, you know part of me got into there, you know, expecting this and that, and when you get hit in the face with, you know, it's not like that. Like, hey, there's an agenda. You know, the team, the the front office, like, there's an agenda there. That it's not about you know how well you do in training camp, in practice, in the G League when they send you there. Like, it's it's not about that. It's, it's business. you know, what, yeah, it's, it's, it's what's on, what's on their mind. And when, and the, the quicker I wrap my head around that and the perspective I got on that, um, mentally I was a little bit better, but during the year, I just remember, you know, talking to my family, my parents and, you know, they would just be like, man, you're just not, you're not the same happy, you know, happy to be here playing basketball, right. enjoying it. It just, it, it turned into you know, just being okay with losing is really what it, it felt like. And, because we were doing it so much and just the atmosphere was, was not, it was something not to not be desired. And I knew that, um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't for me. Um, had I had gotten another chance, maybe I would have 
stuck it out and try and stick it out right. somewhere else and go somewhere else. But, um, you know, I had an offer from the best team in Europe on the table and, you know, yeah, it's kind of stupid. But before that, you, you go from like four years of Valparaiso, which, I mean, the, the team was just, was one of those teams, you know, the Butlers, the, you know, the, all those surprise teams that come up and have great runs. You have four mm -hmm. incredible years there, even though it gets cut short. Now all of a sudden you move on into your dream of being drafted in the NBA, and everything, yeah. and everything's just like totally the other extreme. It's so it's yeah. so hard for players to get through that mental. I mean, physically you can get through it because you're practicing every day, you're working, but mentally, you know, when you're home alone, that's the hard part. Yeah, you just you see all the great things about it, right? You see right. like the way you travel. You know, the, the hotels you're staying in, like the, the amenities to you, like, you know, what I, you know what I mean? Like, you see all that and like that, like kind of disguises it for a while, right? Like that disguises the, you know, the, the right. losing or like the, the things aren't going that well. You're not playing like, you know, because you're just loving life, right? And, and some guys, I think, get caught up too much in loving that life that they stop loving basketball. They yeah. stop, you know, understanding why it is that you're there. And for me, I just, I, after I look past all of that, it was like, man. Like I'm not, I'm not loving basketball right now. Like I need to be, where can I be back, you know, fully engaged and involved in the game. And um, yeah, unfortunately that year was, it was tough. It was tough to find that. I said, it's a lot easier to get used to a five-star hotel than it is to lose it every night. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm not even, man, some of the, some of the stuff from the NBA was like, you know, you, you would drop your bag off and you wouldn't see that bag until it was in your hotel room and you landed wherever you were going. Like it right. just, like some things I'm like, man, this, this, this is not real life. Like man, this is just yeah, not yeah. real life. And I under, I understand why guys want to play till they're 38, 40 years old. Cause it's like, well, how, why would you ever want to give this up? You know, this is as good as it can get. Yeah. The, the, the post isn't the best ever, but you know, you, <laughs> you, you don't need to worry about that just now. So how the hell for, for lack of a better word, how do you get to, how does Dimitris he do this find you? Who's my boy, by the way. And and all of a sudden you're on Cheska Moscow. And like I remember doing like the first time I did a game of your of yours. I think it was actually the first. I th you might have played Real Madrid that season, the first game. I'm not sure, but it, it was right in the beginning of the season. And mm -hmm. I'm looking through the list. I'm like, who the who the f is this guy? Where did he come from? Man, I I, I ask myself that question too. I don't, <laughs> man. And that's just like, I will always have such a special, you know a special thing for coach Atutis because he gave me that, that first opportunity. I was playing summer league with Phoenix that summer, um, you know, summer 2018. And I was getting calls from him in my Vegas hotel room, you know, during summer league. And he's like, Hey, look, like, you know, this is what it is over here right now. You know, you're in the situation you're in. I have a better situation for you. My agent's telling me, you know, about it. And I had watched your league. I would followed your league in college a little bit just because, you know, I wanted to play professional basketball. It didn't matter where. Right. I just wanted to play. So I, I, I had kind of a pre, preconceived knowledge of, of your league and all that stuff. So it wasn't, like, foreign to me. But when it finally, you know, hit me over the head, like, okay, this isn't just an offer from, you know, a, a Euro league team that's, you know, been right. fighting for playoff spots. Like, this is, this is Cheska. This is a team that's winning right now that has the roster that, you know, nobody can compete with, like, and all they need is you. Like, and Coach Atutis was like, you know, we just need someone like you, that's it. And my agent kind of had to hit me over the head a little bit. He's like, hey, dude, you're, you're an idiot if you, if you pass on this. Cause no one, cause no one, man, no, no one gets this kind of thing. And, 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 you know, most guys have to come and they have to start out first division somewhere else, exactly. build, build their career up. And man, I was, man, blessed by, blessed by Coach Atutis to have an opportunity of a lifetime to come in right away. I mean, he's he's one of those guys that recognizes talent also. And and I think that, like, you know, like your agent probably said or what you probably thought is, man, you know, you, you guys don't get that opportunity. You know, you're Will Clyburn, mm -hmm. for example, who comes from, you know, a second division team in, in Turkey, then gets to, you know, gets an opportunity with Dar es then gets, you know, and just kind of climbs yeah. up that, that ladder. And, and jumping right in without being an NBA star or, you know, or, or, or a yeah. big time player is, is not normal. But, and, and not only that is you get to win the damn Euro league your first year that, I mean, you know, you know, that sucks for so many players. <laughs> Dude, I, I, oh man. And, and like, this is what's so, this was so funny about it and kind of bad about it at the same time. Like how naive I was to like this whole thing. 
I didn't have any family there for the final four. Like no. I had, I had a friend, I had a friend there and that, that was it because I just didn't know. I was like, I didn't know like how, like I knew it was, everybody talked about it. It's special. It's, right. the, it's the biggest competition. It's the most exciting for the whole year. Like this is it. This is the, this decides the best team. And I was like, okay, cool. Like I, I just like approached it as like we were going to play another road game and, and I didn't have family travel with, but then like, once we won and I saw the celebration and I saw like, I, it just like, I'm like, like, yeah, like, damn it. Like why it'd be awesome to have, you know, my girlfriend here right now or like my right. mom or my dad, like, you know, I really messed this up. And so like, I, I am, I am just, I'm waiting for the day that we win it again and I can have everybody there. And, you know, I thought last year was going to be that moment, but I can have everybody there, my wife, my daughter now, family, and right. I can just be, I can make up for, for not being able to celebrate it that first time. You'd be what, one of those guys just bringing your daughter down and putting them on your shoulders. You know? Oh, you, oh you, dream about it. Dream you, about you it, know, man. You I know, can't wait. You know, I, I swear to you, I'm the guy that started that because I did that in 95 with yeah. the, guy, the guy who interviews you before and after the game. And I had him down there. I think I was one of the first ones to bring him down. And now everybody does it. I love it. I think it's a, a special moment. Hopefully, you'll get there again. Love that trend. I mean, you I mean, thank thank God you started that because it is. It's it's those are the moments. I don't, moments, I don't know those if I things. did or not, but I'm claiming it. Yeah, claim it, man. Claim yeah. it. You know, there, it was camera. Yeah. Were there cameras back then? No social media or anything like oh, that. No, nobody can no, tell no you way. otherwise. I was gonna say, yeah, there were cameras, and they were colored too. They weren't black and white. I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't dude, mean to date you there. You played seven minutes in the final game. You played 13 and a half in the, in a semifinal game over in Madrid. So. I'm kind of leading up in the last year a little bit, but I mean, you had a good a good season, and you had a good Final Four. I mean, it, I mean, it's your first damn year. You know how many people fight to get it? You know how many people just like an NBA championship? Charles Barkley, John Stockton. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, those are all the, the Michael Jordan eras. But you know, to get to get a big trophy like that your first year, even though I know you guys won the VTB League that year also, but. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, and plus you're participating. It's, it's not like you're just, you know, you were, you were just mm -hmm. there, you know? I mean. Yeah. It, it, it's like an addiction, man. Like it's just, you, you got, you got me started on an addiction early because right. once I tasted that, it was like, you know, okay, next year, like, how can I get it again? How can I get it again? You know, at FS, like we, it was 100% heading that way too, before oh, the no COVID doubt. thing happened in the season style. Like nobody was touching us. You know, Shane was having the most unbelievable season you could have had um, at that point. Like it was a freight train coming through and I was thinking like, okay, back to back, you know, <laughs> how many guys have done that in their first two, I know Kyle Hines did it when he was at the Olympiacos, but right. like how many guys have done that? Not, not you know, how many first... guys, how many teams is even, I mean, it's only been, it's yeah. only happened three yeah. times, you know? Yeah, yeah, and, and like, it just, oh, it, it, that was, that sucked when the season got cut and, and couldn't get that chance again, the, but now it's, the interesting part of that is y'all beat Ephesus in the finals mm -hmm. to win that championship. Yeah. And then, then did, did he do this and the club let you go? Or did you get an offer from yeah. Ephesus? No, they, I think that summer kind of all started when, when Nando DiColo, I think decided that he wasn't going to stay um, right. with Cheska. And I think there was just at that point after winning, I don't know if there was, and again, I'm speculating here, but maybe they just decided like, okay, hey, we've done it with this group for a few years now. Like we need to change a few things around. You know, Nando's been here forever. Like he's not going to be here anymore. Um, you know, let's start to think about changing some things here and there. And, you know, for whatever reason, I didn't take anything personal with it. it I understood that, you know, hey, this is, this is the business side of it. Um, you know, some guys are fortunate to stay in places for multiple years. And, and for me, I, I won the championship. You know, could I have... You help myself maybe a little bit better here and there for sure, but it's my first year. I didn't I didn't really like place too much expectation on myself. Um, but yeah, it, it was you know in the summer, Coach Judas called me and said, "Hey, they were, they were the team was just moving in a in a different direction," and I was just thankful that I had another year league job that I could you know fall right. into place and more or less carry on with the career. I think one of the most justified European championships ever was Efes winning after the COVID year. And I know, I, yeah, I know you were, yeah. I know you weren't a part of that. You were a part yeah. of, you were a part of the foundation, so to speak, let's say though, because that COVID year was, was absolutely amazing. I mean, it was the, the way you guys were playing, you already mentioned it. It was just, 
you were steamrolling teams. And, you know, we all know that, you know, I guess the case would be Real Madrid this year, that not the, the, the team that dominates throughout the year is not the team that always wins. No, but, no, it's not. But FS the second year after you left, unfortunately for you, won that title again. And I mean, how good of a feeling was that for you, knowing that you were part of that? I mean, either way, you're part of it. Yeah, and, and it felt good. The only, the only thing that felt good about it was when, you know, those guys would text me. Those guys right. would text me afterwards and be like, hey, like, you know, we know you're not here right now, but it's, you know, we still want to, you know, give you your – uh, you know, give you your flowers, so to speak. For being See, here Alec, Alec man, that, that's, part of that. that's awesome, dude. What you just said yeah. is like the coolest thing ever because yeah. that's what that's what this game's all about. Not about the fame, not about the money, not about making a last second shot. It's about having your peers texting you, man, when you missed out on something yeah. that you should have been there for. That's yeah. that, that. You just gave me the chills, dude. I mean, that was, that yeah. was, that's awesome. Bro. Brian Dunson, one of the best teammates I could ever, ever ask for, man. Like, I still have a great relationship with him today. And, and yeah, just to hear from him, you know, after they had won that first year, like, you know, he, you know, because I, I was a little down about it. You know, I did feel some yeah. certain type of way. I, you know, I, I wanted to be there. I wanted to be a part of it. Of course. And, um, you know, it, it did suck a little bit having to see them celebrated. And, um, you know, just to hear from him and to hear from the guys afterwards about, Whatever it just was, yeah, it made, made me a little bit better. Maybe pick up, pick my. I mean, I mean, come on, you're not, you're not, you're not a legit athlete if that doesn't bother you a little bit. I mean, no, it, be, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and even the year after, the year after when they won again, I just, you know, it still bothered, right. me. It still bothered me. But <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's what it's about, though, man. It's how how can you get yourself in that situation to give yourself a chance to do it? Yeah, I mean, you know, being in the right place at the right time. It happened to you the year before that, unfortunately, then happened. Mm -hmm. For you again, and you went to, during that time the the double championship. By Evans, you're in Basconia, and you already mentioned um, Ivanovic today. Look at, I played with Selko. I played, you know, I played with a lot of guys, and and man, they're they're hard to play for on a daily basis. Man, they they know how to get into your head. They know how to get into your mind. They know how to get into your physical capabilities. But at the end of the day somehow or another it makes you a better player and i think you've already kind of mentioned that before um tell me about what it was like playing for him and that team because you know that team is one of the teams that's known almost to develop talent for the rest mm -hmm. of the year league sometimes they're bringing these new guys yeah and they develop them and sometimes you know they win sometimes they don't but um tell me what it's like to play for that team and, and play for dusko I, I'll say this, man. I know a lot of people have a lot of, you can go here and there, the spectrum on people, what people have to say about, about Dusko. And um, I will always, always say that, that what he did for me set me up for the rest of, of my career um, mm -hmm. in your league. I mean, he, the opportunity he gave me, he, he helped me find a lot of things about myself through the difficulties in training camp, through all that, like that have, stuck with me today like I I didn't know until I you know the first couple of weeks playing for him when he was telling me like, hey you need to lose weight and I was like wait coach what are you talking about coach like I you know I feel like I'm in good shape I'm like, in shape I, you know, man I'm in shape like, yeah I played I played you know he's like he's like no 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 like you know two kilos more you need to lose two kilos more and I'm like okay like I guess I'll you know and then I did it after a few weeks and I've been at the I've been playing at that weight I make sure I stay at that same weight uh -huh. you know for the last three years because I did, I started being, I started getting faster. I started, you know, from what I already was, I'm not saying I'm the fastest guy in the world, but like, I just, I felt that there was another gear I could get to another shape that I could get in. He showed me what it meant to really be in shape, to play the game of basketball, the way that, you know, I could potentially play it. And, right. you know, I, I give him all the credit in the world for that because, you know, who knows how many years it would have taken before I discovered that, um, before I discovered or, that by myself. Or, or, or if you would have discovered it. Yeah, or or if, and uh, you know he'll he'll put you through the ringer, man. Like you know you'll be running outside, you know practice twice a day, sometimes without the ball. Like you know guys, you know all the stories and stuff. You know that guys share about it. Like it's it's not easy, but yeah. you know mm -hmm. when you get into that game and you you know start playing and you start realizing like okay, like the way this guy is is coaching the game of basketball and he's coaching us to play, like it's going to give us a chance and it's given me opportunity to to be the best I can be, and I'm very thankful thankful for for him giving me that opportunity.
And I, I remember when when Obradovich showed up to Madrid when I was playing there, and I was you know I was at what I thought was the top of my game, you know, because I was like, man, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, people telling me I'm like one of the best in Europe, blah blah blah, so on and so on. And he just walks in, is like, I'm gonna make you a better player. And and you know, isn't and, that amazing? Isn't and, that and amazing how but like it, but it's somebody kinda, else can see but that? But it, it's yeah. kind of confrontational to start with. Mm -hmm. It was like, his mm -hmm. first question was like, you think you're good? I'm like, well, I've always thought I was good, but now people tell me I'm good. That's different. Yeah. And, he's, and he's like, well, I'm going to make you better. And, I, and, and your first thing in your mind is like, hey, fuck you. You're not going to make me any better. I'm already here. No. <laughs> right. Like, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's amazing, man. Like, how other people can see that. Like, you know, you know how did you feel? When somebody, like, knowing somebody else could see that in you. Right. But you, could, you didn't see it in yourself. And you thought, like, man, I'm, you know, I'm... I'm I'm where I'm at. Like, this is, this is me, you know, take it or leave it. But it's like when somebody steps in and tells you like, no, there, there's, there's more, you can get out of yourself, yeah. more you can get out of yourself. And, and <laughs> once you do get that more out of yourself, it's like, you look back and like, oh, okay. Yeah, it, thanks, but, but, but isn't there a point where you look back and like, damn, man, I wish someone would have told me this three years ago. I'd be somewhere else right now. Yeah. <laughs> and coach, we go back to coach, go back to coach Atutis. He was the one that truly, gave me my like you know trajectory as a, as a player uh, right. before that it was like it was like you know hey you're 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 a foreman you you know you you spot up you make shots you rebound you know try and be tough on defense be tough on the glass and he helped me realize like hey man like you can get this extra dimension you can be this mobile perimeter guy who can attack closeouts who can come off screens and shoot who can push the ball in transition who can play you know post up like you know, you have that ability and this is what you can get to. It's just, you know, it's going to take time. It's going to take opportunity, but don't limit yourself to just, you know, what you're doing for our team right now. And, you know, I'm, when he showed that to me or explained that to me, having a coach like him that won championships and is well-respected and, um, you know, him having that honesty with me, it really, it really pushed me forward to add that new dimension to my game. So, you, so you go from a guy that, that in Dusko that kind of gets more out of you than even you ever knew you had or expected. And you head to coach Bartzokas in, in Olympiacos and, and you get there. And of course, I do, you kind of realize when you sign the contract that you're going to be kind of like sick and fiddle to Sasha. There were some rumors that he was maybe going to the NBA, but then he didn't, then he stayed. And how did that feel for you? Because as your game's picking up, you go to a place that's kind of going to sit you back down again. Yeah. And, you know, and initially, um, you know, in my mind, it wasn't going to be like that. It was, you know, the, the vision was, you know, talking to coach and stuff before coming to Olympiacos was, hey, you know, you and Sasha, I see a lot of opportunity of you guys to play together. Right. And I had always, you know, thought of myself as being able to not just play the four, but play the three as well. Um, and, and, you know, in certain situations, in certain minutes, you know, I was, getting a lot better on the perimeter. I was getting a lot better defensively. Um, you know, I just felt that, you know, there was more, there, there was more that I could do more than just being a four man. Um, and, you know, coach agreed with me and, you know, that kind of sold me. It's like, okay, here's opportunity to, to not only join a good team and, and play a little role, but I can, you know, swing both positions. I could play with Sasha um, as well. And, you know, during the season, obviously coaches, coaches have tough jobs, man. I'm not going to sit here and and yeah, say that difficult. you know we we you know we, we we hindsight's always twenty twenty. We can always look back and say, hey, coach, you should have done this. You should have done that with me, whatever. So I'm not gonna you know sit here and blame coach for you know not going to it as much. Would I have liked to have had more um, opportunity in that first year? But you know Sasha was having the the season he was having. Our team was right. was rolling. We were the best team all year, and you know there were some games where I could step in and have a big impact, and other games where I didn't. And um, I never lost my my trust in my routine and making sure that that my game still stayed well rounded. Um, you know, I never lost you know that the faith in what I could do um, and in, in the moments that I could do it, I made sure that I you know didn't I didn't fall back on just being a guy that just stood out there and and let things happen. So it you know in one way or another it was it was good for me to kind of just take a step back and you know continue to keep working and and hopefully one day it would pay off. You kind of had in my research and the stuff that these guys at IMG send me all the time. They always take care of me with with a lot of my work, and uh, and you had kind of a similar situation that I had in Basconia, that one day I got a phone call saying that I wasn't coming back. 
<laughs> and uh, hey man, it's, it's yeah. something that to this day I talk about a lot. You know, I'm, I'm close with everybody in Baskonia. Jose and I, you know, every time I see him, I give him a hug. I thank him for, you know, I always thank him for the opportunity he gave me. But it was, it was a, it was a, a strange goodbye. It, you know, it was like, and I read yeah. your quotes, and I'm like, man, it sounds like the same thing happened to you. What, what exactly happened? I mean, because it sounds like yeah. you wanted, kind of wanted to stay, like I did. Yeah, I, I was, I was full in on staying, man. I was, you know. Ten toes d dug in, man. I, I believed in what we were doing there. Great city, I really too, thought, man. Great city. I, I really thought it was a place that if you if you just gave it, you know, gave it the time and really like kept a core of guys, like you you could, you know, we could do something. And, and I yeah. felt like it was heading in that direction. But yeah, I, you know, it was it all started. I think when I had to, uh, you know, get knee surgery that second year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, came, you know, had to, had to go through that whole process. And, you know, part of that, part of that situation, I regret a little bit because there was a lot of like in between time of when I got hurt to then, you know, trying to, you know, is it going to get better on its own? You know, you know, the, the, the song and dance everybody yeah, does yeah, sometimes with, you know, can we get this right without having to have surgery? And eventually I had to get surgery and we wasted a little bit of time to get to that point. And then here we go. I missed half a season. Um, you know, and by that time, you know, coach Ivanovich got let go, you know, Nevin, Spahia got hired and we finished the season out and I still felt like I had a really good second half of that season. Um, but all the while there was a, uh, you know, kind of a little passport situation going on that fell through for me. And because of the knee surgery, I wasn't able to play in the windows, wasn't able to get the passport. And I think because of all of this, you know, long, make a long story short, some of this stuff, you know, didn't go my way and eventually it was like okay hey I know you're under contract for the next year but if you have somewhere else that you can you can go we'll kind of just let this let this all be what it is and we'll let you go and that, that hurt it did hurt because I did believe right. in in the place and what we were doing and um, I wanted to stay I was you know fully expecting on staying I didn't move any of my stuff home my stuff was still stuck in Vitoria and um, but you know things happen for a reason and <laughs> and I was able to to pick up and go somewhere that now I, I love and don't could never imagine leaving. Yeah, we got a, we got a lot in common now. Everything you told me, I've already lived it. <laughs> yeah, lived it yeah. A long time. Isn't, isn't it amazing? It, yeah. Isn't it amazing, man? How these these just like it's just, just the cycles, cycles man. They just keep just coming around and around. Cycle. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, the, the year before that year, you're in Basconia. The year before you show up to Olympiacos, they get their heart just destroyed by Misic. Mm -hmm. In the in the semifinal game and on that that three point on the buzzer and then mm -hmm. you come into town and I hate to do this man but I have to <laughs> it's the crossover we do have to talk about last year's final four your season was a a, a, a decent season like you said before you were kind of in and out not up to your expectations what you expected from mm -hmm. from coach and from the team at that point but. Um, you averaged about ten minutes a game in the playoff against Fenner the most you played in that. That playoff series was the third game. I think that was when, when Lucas hit mm -hmm. the, th the incredible three on the buzzer, and and you get to the final four. You don't play much. It was four and a half minutes, I think, in the in the semi, zero in the mm -hmm. final, and you watch Sergio just knock down that only two points of the of the final four for him. <laughs> Dude, I just, just, I mean, I know you can't just sum it up because there's too many emotions, too many feelings, yeah. but you know, as much as you can talk about the victory, I, I need you to talk about that heartbreaking loss too, man. It's got to be so hard. Yeah. And I, I, I'm not shy about it, man. That I, I felt like that was, you know, a huge, huge, like backbreaker, you know, moment for me to come to that point, having been to a final four before, having won a championship before, having, you know, experience in that environment to, to then, you know, get a goose egg in the, in the playing time in the championship game. Um, you know, it, it made me feel a certain type of way, um, right. you know, and it's still, it's still, you know, when it gets, you know, brought up or when people want to talk about it, like, yeah, it brings up that anger still and that embarrassment, um, you know, having lost the game, you know, you win the game and then it's like, okay, whatever, you know, right, we won right, the game. Right all the emotion and everything from it. But when, but when you, when you lose the game and you lose the way we lost, everything gets overanalyzed. Everything starts to get broken down more. And yeah, I, I felt, I felt, 
you know, super angry about not getting the opportunity or not, you know, being able to help the team um, in that championship game, especially when Madrid goes on late in the game. And exactly. here I am with this, with this unwavering belief that I'm the best shooter that you're going to find in that situation. And dude, dude Ma Madrid, Madrid got through those five games of Partizan because of the zone. And they beat Barcelona because of the zone. Mm -hmm. and, and so, I mean, to me, I yeah. mean, I look, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to knock on coach Barzokas. I think he's a great no, coach. No, and, and me either. Yeah, coach, and coach, you know, I'm, he, he's a very realistic guy. He knows yeah. that I'm angry about it. He, he right. for sure, you know, he, he's got that kind of feel with his players. Like, of course, he's not going to make everybody happy, but, you know, he knows that, you know, Alec Peters is going to be pissed for not playing any minutes. Yeah, but, 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 I, think, but, but I think coach is – the, the way that I know him anyways is, is he's the kind of guy to sit back and, and probably say like, damn it, I should have freaking played. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's my, that's my bad too. You know what I mean? Yeah. We could play, you know, coaches, I've like right. said earlier, they have, they have a tough job and they could play what if, you know, all year long. And like, if Yule doesn't make that shot, nobody right. says anything, but you exactly. know, he did. And, you know, yeah, I was angry watching Madrid go zone and us not, you know, them just clawing back slowly into that game. And, sitting there thinking like hey coach like a, you know if they're playing zone it's nice to have some shooting out there and you know, do, you know even if it's for a few minutes man i can help like i can you know i can i can provide something and right you know it just it didn't work out that way and the game didn't work out our way it was uh it was gut-wrenching man to walk away from from countess and and fly back home and yeah having to relive that a little bit and it, it i mean to be honest man that that anger towards that has carried me a little bit right. through uh through the summer through this year that you know more or less chip on my shoulder of like hey we get in that situation again you know i don't want any doubt in anybody's mind of who needs to be on that floor and you know hopefully we do get in that situation again dude you give me i mean tell you man you give me the chills when you talk about it because that's exactly what i was you know <laughs> when i was doing all the the research and the interviews you know i i realized that you were just kind of like this player like i said i i just i i expected more of you in the time that you've been in Europe. I expect, maybe not what you're doing now. I didn't expect all mm -hmm. this because you're killing it right now. But I expected a more consistency. You know, probably the type of guy that maybe spends three years on one team, goes to another team for three, four years. It doesn't skip around to four or five teams. But this season, man, I mean, it, that shot by that shot, shot by Jewel who, over the outstretched hands of fall, I can still, I mean, I mean, if I could still see it, I know you could still see it. Mm -hmm. You probably, yeah. you don't probably close, don't it close your day. eyes. Don't don't close your eyes for too long, <laughs> man, because it it'll work its way in your memory. I'm sure. Man, look, I'll tell you, I've been I've been retired for 24 years. All right, I, I think I retired in 2000, and I still close my eyes tonight and have, have visions of losing to Barcelona in the final of the ACB championship by losing to them in in the semifinals. I mean, so the the things you're gonna bring with you, unfortunately, as years go on. Is that shot in those freaking moments, man? I, it sucks. I was really, I was really hoping you were gonna tell me like, "Hey, it gets better." You know, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, it gets harder, man. It gets harder because I'm 58 yeah. and I still see games where I'm like, "Damn it!" If I could just go back and play that one more time, you know. Do you but, do you still do you do you, uh, do you you know when you do your your commentary for the games and stuff? Do you see moments in games that remind you of moments where that you were playing? You're like, man. Like that shot reminds me of the shot that one guy hit on me when dude you know so and so was playing. Everything. I'm sure you have those moments. Yeah, everything. It's just like they're all like these these mirages, man, where you just see them pop up over and over again. But you know, the hardest part about commentating games is is not being over analytical, you know, because mm. the game's so much different from when I played, and and a yeah. lot a lot of aspects of it are incredibly more visual and more beautiful. Other aspects, yeah, I got my questions about, you know, so, I mean, you're a Valpo guy. You guys played a system type of offense, you know, when you guys played. Mm -hmm. So it's a different type of game, but I love it nonetheless. But you can never get those days out of your mind, man. They, they don't go away. They don't go away. It's, it's, and, and the bad, and the bad days stick with you more than the good days do. <laughs> that's, that's the bad part. But hey, let's talk about your freaking good days, dude, because you are going off right now. You only started three damn games last season. You've started every game so far this season, and your numbers are just, I mean, you're, you're almost tripling your, your overall average. So I feel like I know what I'm talking about when I see a player five, six years ago walk into year and go, damn, this dude could play, man. He needs some more run. It's just taking you a long time to prove me right. 
<laughs> I'm glad I did. <laughs> yeah, so so I'm glad, am I. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I did because, uh, yeah, uh, I think, you know, being in the same place for another year also helps with that. You're able to right. get comfortable. Um, routine kind of stays the same. Coaches, you know, familiarity is there. Uh, but, yeah, just, you know, when, when Sasha left this summer, um, you know, this was – something that I think everybody was waiting on pins and needles for, you know, is he going to leave, you know, what's going on and, right. you know, to him get that opportunity, he took it. And I think everybody, what was, was left with a question mark over their head, like, Hey, what's Olympiacos going to do? You know, it's Lucas leaves, Sasha leaves, like, where do they go from here? And, and silently to myself, I'm like, you know, wanting to throw my phone against the wall. Like, Hey, what do you mean? Where they? Like, you know, <laughs> they don't got to go anywhere else. Like, Hello. Hey, like I, I'm right, I'm right here. And so, I mean, I just, I, I got to work, um, you know, I was really hoping that the team didn't go out and, you know, sign, you know, Miritich or, you know, sign those, get one of those guys that was up for be a free agent because I really wanted to, I really wanted the opportunity. Right. Um, and, you know. How about, how about, how about when they signed Iggy? Like right, right before the season started. Did that, did that kind of like yeah. throw a little question in your mind? I love, I mean, my, uh, my boy Brad Dakis is cool as shit. I know you guys probably get along no, really well. He, he's, he's the best, man. He's the I, best. I, mean, I, can't, I love him. I, I I'm sick and tired of him talking about Michigan, and because he went, he went there for he went there for a year, and he's like, I'm this Michigan man. Our football team won the national championship this year. No, man. he doesn't. No, no, he, he's he's the best. He's he's the best. Uh, yeah, yeah, but 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 when but when they signed him, my question was like, all right, he's a good, great player. I love the way he mm -hmm. plays the game. I had just done a crossover with him too, so it was kind of cool. And but I'm like. What, what are they signing him for? You know, I because I felt like you were the, you were the guy. Yeah, and, and I don't think I mean shoot, you know how it goes, man. Look at look at all the best teams in Europe, man. The, the more guys you can have, right? The more dudes you can have on your team, the, the better off you yeah. are. And depth is I think, depth you know, is key. Yeah, and the, the team just saw. And this preseason this year was like just war of attrition for our team. You know, we were having guys coming back from national team, um, right. you know, guys you know, battered and bruised from just, you know, the, the preseason, you know, guys unlucky getting a few injuries here and there. And, um, I think that, you know, <laughs> we needed someone like Iggy to step in and, and be there for us because we started the season with such a, you know, just kind of the, the not the team that we expected to have. And, and Iggy was like a breath, he was like a breath of fresh air, um, coming in for us. And, and, uh, and, and man, I give such credit to him and to, you know, to Moses Wright, you know, Nazmi Trulong, these guys, Philip Petrusa, these guys that we signed midway through the year to just, you know, because Coach Barzogas in his system, it's not, it's not the easiest to just jump in and say, right. okay, yep, like, let, let's play. You know, it's very, it's very much like chemistry based with each other and, you know, the feel that we have with each other and, you know, for those guys to step in and have a quick learning curve and, you know, really take it and run with it. Um, you know, it's, it's been amazing to have the depth we have this year and the guys we've added. I don't know. I don't know what your boy Moses took before that Panther the Night goes game, man. But I want some. I want some whatever he was taking. <laughs> give, give me all. Give me all of that, man. That was. It was uh, crazy. You know, you you have you have a good game against Panther the Goes. You're playing for Olympiacos. You're you're etched in the. You're God. Yeah, the, yeah. And yeah. You're you're everything. So it. Yeah. He he has been such a like you know talk about Iggy being a breath of fresh air. Moses has been such a such an awesome addition uh, for our team. It's just his, his, his general, you know, attitude he has about himself and, um, you know, all, you know, the goodness that he brings to our locker room and just the, you know, the young, a little bit naiveness that he has, but it's like a good, it's a good thing because, you know, if you don't know right. what you don't know, exactly. sometimes that's the most freeing thing in your mind and you can go yeah. out and you can just be you and be who you are. And, um, thankfully, you know, a guy like Moses, he's, he's, he's super talented to go along with it. This is normally these crossovers are evergreen content, so I, I'm not supposed to talk. Well, I'm not. I'm not supposed. I can do whatever I want. It's my show, but I hey, got to you <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I got to talk to you about where you're at now, all right? Because I mean, this when you, when this comes out in a week or two, you. I mean, obviously, you're going to be in a different spot today than you are in, than you are in two weeks because yeah. you're. You're two good games away from home court advantage. You're one bad game away from maybe even the play out. Right. You, know, you never right. know. So that, but what's the team like mentally? I mean, this has been a struggle this season compared to the last two seasons. So, I mean, to me, 
I don't want to. I want to like break any secrets, but Ephes went through the same thing a couple of years ago. Where they struggled all year long. Boom, mm -hmm. it was good. It was bad. Injuries, whatever. And then they showed up in the end, and 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 they won it again. And that's kind of like what you guys are kind of like flying under the radar, so to speak. Well, how do you guys feel within the locker? Yeah, I, the whole season, man, just been this this Strange. roller coaster of yeah. you know having guys in, having guys out. You know who is you know who's healthy who's not it, it, and you know that that happened every team has their problems right and it just seemed like for us it just it was such a a reoccurring thing and and we never could truly find that that consistent flow and we did for some stretches of the year right like we rattled off you know a few games right um you know during the the february and, and march uh month here and and to have that going into the most important time of the year um it has us has us feeling really confident i mean we I think for us, it's not about getting the home court. I think that if that happens, great. But in our minds, it's like, okay, can we be, you know, avoid the play? And everybody wants to avoid the play, -in, right? Just that extra week and that extra right. tension of having to play yourselves into into the playoff is just everybody wants to avoid it. But it, I mean, it's essentially know, it's, it's essentially a Final Four. Before, yeah, you know, it, it, it is, four, yeah. and it's yeah, it's an added it's an added week to the year that you just you know if you can stay out of it, you get an extra week before you prepare for the playoffs. So to us, it's about, you know, taking care of business these last two games, whatever position we fall in, uh, we like our chances against anybody. It could be, you know, Barca, Monaco, Pana, you know, Madrid, you know, it just, it doesn't matter to us. We, we're in that kind of a headspace right now as a team that like, you know, we're starting to feel, really feel like our best days are coming at the right moment. We talked about this before we went on air, man. Pan Olympiacos five more games. <laughs> there, there's the possibility. There is Man. not another city you you would want to be in. There there is nowhere else in Europe that somebody would want to be in than see Olympiacos yearly playoff series. I got I mean, my this, ticket. I got my ticket reserved just in case. Just in case. Man. I yeah. I joke. I joke about it. You know, too. I, I always make this joke. And I, like I I prefer that because I you know I was telling you before yeah. like I hate flying. Flying right, is like right, right. my worst. Puts me in my most anxious state. You know, everybody in my team makes fun of me because of it. They look over at me every time there's turbulence. Like, you know, I'm a mess. I'm a mess when I fly. So <laughs> not having to leave home is kind of like my preference. So if we do get matched up with Panna, I probably will be one of the few people that's like. They're excited know. about it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe has a little bit excited about it, but the city will just be on fire if that happens. And what an atmosphere um, that would create. Hey, man, I love the, I love the, the tweet, I think it was, or, or the Instagram where you, your wife said that you popped the question, like, would you like to see these views for the <laughs> next two years? That, dude, that was pretty sweet, man. That's, and that's got to make yeah. her, as as a wife, as a new mother, extremely happy, too, to be able to at least know that she's going to be settled down for a couple more years in the same place. Yeah, and of all the places that we've lived, you know, she was with me in Moscow, she was with me in Turkey, and we got married, um, you know, while I was playing for Basconia in, in Vittoria. So she's been she's been all over the place with me yeah. and, and to have her feel the comfort of home here in Athens, um, you know, comfortable enough to, you know, have our child here and, you know, to raise her, um, you know, there was no there was no fighting about it whenever that that opportunity was presented itself. She was she was, you know, she could have signed it faster than me. You know, she was right. she's been my my biggest supporter, you know, she's been the, the biggest fan of mine and um yeah, I'm, I'm blessed to have the family that I have, the wife that I have. I mean, I really, really love this life that I get to live with her in one of the most beautiful places on earth. They have to deal with a lot of shit, don't they? When you <laughs> Dude, so much shit. <laughs> after bad so games, much shit. after bad practices. And, 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 and sometimes I'll pile it on, too. You know, sometimes you pile it on, you don't even mean to, you know, like, and and this is one thing, too, about about having a kid. I don't, I don't know, you know, if you felt the same way, but everybody tells you, like, oh, you know, your bad days aren't so bad anymore when you have... <laughs> you know the baby at, when you have the baby at home man a month after a month after Ava my daughter was born we played Panna away in domestic league we lost the game I came home just as pissed as I had ever been so I don't know what I don't I don't know what everybody said about oh your kids make your days better when when you know you have bad moments or bad games I'm like man I still came home just as angry as as before so yeah but yeah but i'm that, working i'm working on that still I'm that little girl that. that little girl i know that you just lost the pan of the night because she's gonna cry if yeah. she needs to cry anyway she's yeah. gonna wake up at three in the morning if she needs to wake up anyway if, if she if she could talk if she could talk i've won every game since she's been born i've been telling her that every 
every game we played. I'd be like, oh, daddy won again. She there you go. Know. She doesn't know. She, she doesn't need to know any better. <laughs> hey, let me, before we go to your, the EuroLeague test, let me just let you talk about what you're doing with your basketball camp back back home. Yeah. And the fam, I saw to. the picture, and it's on your tweet and on your Instagram, and yeah, and it just like so, it looks like a whole big happy family all together, man, helping out kids and and, yeah. and and changing their lives a little bit. Talk to me about it. Yeah, that's that's important to me. It is. A, it's a 100 family thing. I don't I don't go anywhere else for the help in organizing or putting on my basketball camp. It's three days in the summer back in my old high school, my old small town that I grew up in. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's a camp that is uh, it's near and dear to my heart because everything that we, uh, all the proceeds, all the sponsorship, everything that we get from that camp um, goes to goes towards a couple of local charities in the area. One of them mainly being um, the foundation that's named after my old high school coach who, who died of, of brain cancer. Um, this was actually a couple of days after we had won the VTV championship in 2019 um, with Cheska, right before I was about to fly home uh, for the summer to, you know, and I, he had been in bad shape and, you know, I thought I was maybe going to see him one more time, but um, he had a huge impact on my life. And, you know, he tragically, you know, died from, from brain cancer in, in 2019 and his foundation started, you know, because of that and it, it helps to, to fight um, brain cancer, raise awareness from it. So everything um, that our camp is geared towards is um, is towards giving back to things like that, and then a few other places as well. Local local charities, you know, whether it's feeding kids that don't have anywhere to go after school, um, you know, play, things like that. And it's it's near and dear to my heart, and and I don't you know I don't go anywhere else for help, and I want it that way. I want my family right. to be one hundred percent involved in it, to work it. People from the area, from my high school, are the ones that work it and are involved in it. Um, you know, that's what means the most to me and it, every year it gets bigger and bigger. And, you know, this year we're expecting our biggest year yet. Awesome, man. That's good shit. That's just, just giving back, man, giving back, using that platform to give back. And it, yeah. you know, players are so much more conscious about that nowadays than, than we were, you know, cause there weren't, there weren't as many opportunities to do those, do those type of things. And I love, I love talking to you guys that like give back to the community, give back, like you said, to an old coach, because, you know, you look back out and, and, Think about the coaches and all the people, teachers that influenced your life, whether in a positive or a negative way. It all depends on how you used it, you know, the, the, for the for the outcome yeah. of where you're at today. It's it's good stuff, man. Yeah. To give back. Yeah, it, man. Just uh, it it still it's, it's it weighs on my heart, man. Like having to having to see you know uh, you one of your mentors growing up go through something yeah. you know so so tough and you know making him feel like less of a god than what you thought of him and. Um, yeah, to see him go through that, and you know, it's 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 the littlest thing I could do is is to repay and and try and do my effort and bring my effort to um, to that foundation and through our camp. And I only wish we could do more. I mean, right? We all we all wish we could just yeah. keep, you know do more do more if we could. And you know, maybe someday, you know, maybe we'll do a second one in the summer. But for now, I'm you know extremely extremely happy and, and blessed to be able to be a part of of that. That's a special memory you have every year when you go back home too. That's that, that's oh. that's the coolest part, you know. Yeah, you're a big man on campus, man. I walk in there and I look over at my wife every time. I'm like, hey, I used to, I, I used, used to, to kill it place. here. <laughs> I used to kill it here. Yeah, you dude, that's love to see hey, me. <laughs> hey, that's another thing that doesn't change. I still say that shit. I'm 58. <laughs> yeah, hey, you always we always have that, right? We always I, we I always walk, have I, that. I walk into the stadium where you play right now, like yeah, I used to I used to kill these guys when I came here. <laughs> Hey man, it's Euroleague test time. I know you're pretty astute on a lot of things. I saw like in in the research that you always want to be like in tune with. You want to know who's in the room. You want to know what's going on. You want to be prepared for everything. So I hope you're prepared for this test. I got. I, I don't know. I don't know what kind of preparation I could have done, but if if there was preparation for this, I you know hopefully I I've done enough. I got five questions for you. Each one is All worth right. ascending points: 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. They obviously okay. get harder. I think they went pretty easy on you, to be honest with you. I think they went pretty right. easy on you. All you're, right. starting, you're, setting ex, you're setting expectations right now, thinking that if I if I live up to it, great. If I don't, you'll be able to blast me a little bit. But so I'll good. tell you what, the guys that's that I good. the guys that I work with that do all this this research and, and, and do like 50% or 80% of my work sometimes, they know who the who the, the, the leaders are. They they tell me every show, 
and I always forget who the leaders are. But I think that I think the leader has got 100 and 100 points, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm sure I'll get a text message here in a minute while we're starting. But you got a chance. You ready for question number one? I'm ready. Give it to me. This one is a tricky one. Let's see if you got it. How many Spanish teams are participating in the Euro League this year? And name them. Um. Well, you said it was tricky. Um, <laughs> yeah, Basconia, Valencia, Real, and Barcelona. Basconia, Valencia, Real, Barcelona. There you go. You got it. You scared me for a minute. <laughs> All right, ten, ten points. I'll take it. All right, Not zero. Twenty it's more now. Zero. Twenty more on the table. Who has the all-time scoring record in a single EuroLeague game? Uh, it's Nigel Hayes Davis, who just did it what, <laughs> last week. There you go. I was, gonna, I was gonna talk about it during this interview, but I didn't want to because I knew the question was coming up, so I couldn't say yeah. anything about it. But man, and, and, and you know, I'm gonna, Pablo's gonna get mad at me, everybody's gonna get mad at me, but you know, I had 63 in one game. And they don't count that as a record because it was before the actual 2000 EuroLeague. But Ni Nigel knows it. Shane knows it. No, I make sure. Where's your yeah? Where's your credit, man? Where, I know. Where, I, I make. Don't where, worry. I, don't worry. I get my credit. I get. Yeah, I'll yeah, make sure yeah, they you, know it. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell everybody that now. That brings it up. I'm be like, nope, you're wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly. who. That, I know who actually is number one. Start spreading the rumor, baby. Start spreading the rumor. All right. Number three, you got 30 points already. How many EuroLeague titles has Coach Barsokas won as a coach? Okay, Olympiacos won. Um, is that it, is it one? That's your answer? That's my answer. You got it, man. Yeah. It was against Real Madrid, it was back yeah. to back from the previous year. Yep. Yep. There you I, go. Yeah. All right. All right. We're good. We're, so you're we're looking rolling. at 60 points right now. We're rolling. All right. Here comes one that you might have to think about just a little bit. All right. I got just got a message. The record's 110 points, and a few different players have it. But you are on a good track right now. Okay. This one's worth 40 points, which will take you to 100. So you got. No, you got 60 points. 40 to 100. Yeah. Which current player? of the league has also played for Basconia and Olympiacos. Which current A player, player in the league playing right now actively has also played for Basconia and Olympiacos. Like you. Do you you're not going to give me the current team they're on either. That would give it away, huh? Of course it would. Come on. I, yeah. And then okay. I have everybody okay. else who did my crossover that pissed off at me. Uh, <laughs> Basconia and Olympiacos. Um, yeah, I'm probably making this harder than it needs to be. Um, man, I'm getting stumped right now. This sucks because, you know, in order to beat the 110, I gotta get this right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like he, he's got the numbers down and everything. You got it all figured out. Yeah. You, you, yeah. Did do your, you did do your pre, pre work. Um, oh, uh, Wade Baldwin. Damn, he got it. Wade Baldwin, yeah. I, that's, that's, I can't believe I didn't come up with that soon. That's, 100 gosh. points. There we go. We got the chance for the all time record. No one has ever gotten all five questions right. You, 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 guys are give me, you, guys, you guys are gonna throw something hard at me. No, right? the question's yeah. already set, man. We can't change all right, it. All right, all right, all right. Who's the only player to have two triple doubles in your league history? Um, is it Nick Kalaitis? Damn. No. I thought I thought we had the all-time winner when you said Nick did I, too. Did I? Oh no. <laughs> But that, no, hey, I got it wrong. that's a great guess, though. That's what I would have probably said also, but it's Nikola Vucevic. Yeah, Vucevic is my second guess, but I, I, I went too quick. All right, yep. Yeah, you took so long on Baldwin. You should have taken your time on that one. I know, I know. I jumped the gun. <laughs> <laughs> All 
hundred points, we, we my can, man. We can cut that. We we can cut that and do it. You better do it and right? do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I I did that one day in an interview. Where they made they made me shoot like over a minute, uh, like a minute to shoot <laughs> or thirty seconds. I was like, dude, you need to cut that shit. I need to do it and do it again. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that amazing when, when the when they do bring you for like a little media thing like all right I need you to make it three it's and like, you can't right, make no, one I'm, you missed seven in a row it's like all right I, I look great I look great right now uh, yeah and the cam the cameraman probably doesn't even know who you are yeah right <laughs> <laughs> hey listen Alec man this has been this has been absolutely amazing I I I I, I want to say first of all that thank you for being here and taking your time to be with me and and, and with my my listeners. But most importantly, you made me look good. That's the most important thing, man. When people make me look good, that's a good thing. I've been saying for years that this shit was going to happen to you and that you were going to be the man. And now you're becoming the man. And I love it. I love seeing it. I hope to see you in Berlin. That's the one place I want to see you. And I hope you step up and, and you're able to bring that Ava down and put her over your shoulders one yep. more time for the first time and, and get down on that court, win that title, man. And best of luck to you. Thanks for everything, man, and and, and just th you know, thanks for being you, man. It's a lot. It's a lot of fun to have this interview with you. Yeah, thank thank you guys. I mean, I, I from here on out, believe me, I'm screaming to the world. You know, Joe R. Lucas, 63 points. <laughs> yeah, this, it, it, we're gonna we're gonna get you. We're gonna get you back on top, man. That's I'm campaigning right. the rest of the year. So it's the least hey, I man. could do. Least I could do for for you having me on here. Least I could do. So I, I appreciate I, it. Thank I had some. I had some people in in, in the Euro League post and the Nigel Nigel Davis thing with 50 points say something about something about that other record but we ain't gonna talk about that it's that was a long time ago my man it was 30 years ago brother we're counting <laughs> i'm counting i'm telling you anytime somebody brings it up I'm, nope no nope, hey man i know I, i'll tell you what and we should talk about it real quick not that he was it was ridiculous what he did i mean he only played 29 minutes yeah i mean what a what talked about being like that's not even being in the zone that's just being in a different plane yeah. than everybody else like that's he, just he did that shit in 29 oh, yeah. minutes. I texted him the other day, and I was just like, man, dude, that that was just, I, you know, I said, I said, Nigel, it's a Saturday night, and I'm literally in my house watching your 50-point game. That's how important it was to me to watch it and see it, man. Yeah. That was I mean, so you, impressive. You, watch, you, you, re, you rewatch a game like that, He, you know, talk about you're involved in every yeah. single play, and it's like, but you dude, know, the, the first of all, the stamina he has to do it, and yeah, that's yeah, that's to huge. be able to do it as as efficiently as he did too is just and at, and and at the end of this season. But but the thing was is like you're sitting there watching the game, and they pull him out with like 36, and I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, yeah. and and, and yeah. I've I've always said the same thing about Selko in my game, and I and I wrote this to Nigel. I said, man, look at send Saras my love man send him a, uh, give him a high five for me for putting you back in the game yeah. and letting you do that because I had a coach in Selko who let me do mine and that and that's that's huge because mm -hmm. you could have easily sat him down and said man you, we've won the yeah. game we're up by 25 sit down and be quiet and then that 50 never shows up so congratulations yeah, I, to the coach also yeah and I, I was on the court when uh, Shane had his game against Munich at, at, at Ephes, the 49 points. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. and in, the, in the fourth quarter there, Coach Ottoman took him out, um, you know, and, you know, he was close. And, but, like, I think it was more just to give him, like, a, I think it was getting to a point where he was forcing a little too much. And right. He needed just a little breather, but he took him out for, like, a minute and threw him back in there to, well, like, to finish it off. I will but, I will say that my boy Nigel Hayes Davis was cherry picking and then that fourth quarter just a little bit. <laughs> You know, when you just, you're feeling it, you, sometimes hey, it's just, a, some things take over and it leads you to be doing some things. That, I love it, know, man. I, hey, it I, can't be, I, I can't be happy for him, man. He's, he's yeah. a great guy and, and a hell of a player. 50's so. 50. 50's 50, that's yep, for sure. Exactly. And and, and it's, such a, it's such a round number, too. It's perfect. It even sounds better than 49. But, yeah, hey, know. Alec, man, thanks again. I appreciate it. Took a lot more time than Thank I wanted you, to with you, but like you said, you talk a lot, so... Uh, yeah, I, but th thank God you didn't ask me about PIR. I can go on a, a hundred minute, hundred page book rant about how I hate that stat. So that can save that for, you, for you, another time. You so. know what I can't stand about that stat is it determines everything, which really determines nothing. Everything, and it's the most, it's the laziest box score. People who don't want to watch basketball type you, of statistic. You, you, you know when I when I'm commentating games and they give me the MVP of the game. And it's always a guy. I'm, I'm like, come on, man. I mean, 
Look at who just won the game in the fourth quarter. That's your player of the game. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, so, there's so much accounted for there that just doesn't lead to real impact. There's been, I mean, you're going to get me on this rant, but there's been games where the team with the most PIR added up doesn't win the game. Doesn't win the game. Why, why do you have a statistic for performance if you are supposedly have the best performance amongst your players, but you no. lose the game? I don't. Whoever, whoever made that stat up, I think, needs to... You know, go find a different sport to watch because it's just, it is, it's lazy. It's just a lazy thing for people who don't want to watch the game can look at a box score and say who played well. It's also the plus minus. Sometimes you look at you like, really? Does that even add up or make sense? But anyways, yeah. it's all analytical yeah. now, my man. It's a whole different game. Bro. And That's right. 30 years That's from right. now, 30 years from now, when you're interviewing a guy that's just about to turn 29, you'll be saying the same thing like that. You remember when we did the PIR? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Alec, man, thanks a lot, man. Congratulations to you and the family on your contract and your new state in Olympiacos. When I come into town, I'm going to hit you up. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, Joe. All right, Thank I'll you guys. see you. Bye. See you.